Uh-huh. And no, not that one. That one. There we go. Let's just make sure my audio is working. Good. All right. So I'm just going to uh, wait on the screen a little bit, let some people trickle in. Uh, make sure you fill out the attendance for this week. Otherwise, you won't be counted as a member and you want to be counted. Otherwise, you can't vote. <laughs> Streamer setup, yeah. Who knows? This is actually the third time I've ever streamed, and it's all for InfoSec. This hopefully should be a fun workshop. I'll give it till 6.06 and then we'll get started. What kind of mic do I have? I think it's an AT2020, an Audio eight, Audio Technica AT2020. It's plugged into a Focusrite Scarlet Solo. Also, just to say, you should need um, the two tools that you're going to need. We're going to need Steghide and you're going to need Binwalk. Uh, as per usual, these are typically included in Kali. Maybe just double check. They're both command line arguments. If you're on ban or man Steghide, sorry, you're in man Binwalk. If your man pages show up, you should be OK. And if not, we're on the command down below. And you can make sure it's installed. Yeah, it does need a preamp. It needs 48 volt power. Yandre Grandpa. <laughs> also, just before I get started, I don't know if he's here, but shout out to Daniel. Shout out to Daniel. I don't know his Discord name. I only know his real name. If your name is also Daniel, I'll include you in that shout out as well. <laughs> All right. Yep. Make sure you fill out this form if you're just joining. That's the attendance form. So fill in all your information and select which workshop you're attending this week. Give it another 30 seconds here. All right, let's get started. Welcome to the Intro to Forensics workshop for today, October I think it's 19th. Yeah, October 19th. Uh, just before we get started, I want to let you know there is a CTF that's coming up. It's a, a beginner CTF. It's hosted for, it's uh, made for sort of middle school, high school level. level and that's a really good place to start if you're just starting out. Uh, it's PCTF. Um, registration is open, so you can register now at pctf.com. Uh, and it's starting uh, at on September 23rd at 10 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, our, st our, our, uh, our time. So if you're a beginner uh, and you're a little bit new to this, check this out. It's a great place to start. I know we're all busy, but maybe take an hour. I don't know. You'll have a lot of fun. I always find these really fun. Make sure you do that. Um, all right. Uh, so intro to forensics by me, James Lowther, this time with camera so you can see my face. Um, so the outline of what we're going to be talking about today, uh, there's a bunch of topics. We're going to have three main challenges that we're going to be doing. Uh, we're going to be starting out with image diagonography. So this is hiding um, hiding data and images. Uh, file signatures and bin walk we're going to talk about. Uh, sort of how a file knows what type of file it is and what bin, lo bin walk allows us to do. Um, we're going to look at some audio file spectrograms. So like WAV file spectrograms. And you'll learn more about that. If you don't know what this word means, it's OK. Um, some other basic forensics tools. And we're also going to talk about mounting file systems. So I'm going to give you a file system. You're going to have to mount it and look around inside for flags. Um, yeah. So what is forensics? Um, so forensics is sometimes seen as a quote unquote catch all category in some CTFs. Uh, what I mean by that is you have your categories of maybe web exploitation and 
binary exploitation and they have kind of not set ways of solving them, but very similar ways. There's sort of a path that you need to take. Um, but forensics is a lot more open-ended. Um, generally, you're given just a static file. And what I mean by that is just like a downloadable file. You're not connecting to a server or anything using Netcat or connecting to a website. You're just downloading a file. Uh, and, you're, and there's a flag or some data hidden inside there. Um, uh, yep. Uh, you typically have to use some analysis tools. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes it's as easy as running strings on it, which we learned before. Sometimes you need to get a little bit clever. Um, and yeah, the flags can be hidden anywhere. Uh, so you kind of have to be clever and you have to look around. It's really just hitting your head against the wall with forensics until you figure it out. That's sort of the main idea. Um, so yeah, so first we're going to talk about image steganography. Uh, and what that is and why it's useful for forensics and how we can hide data using steganography. Uh, I think I said before, steganography always makes me think of dinosaurs. <laughs> so if you ever think, uh, what is it? Stegosaur, steganography, similar? I don't know. So what is image steganography? Um, so like I said, when we talk about steganography, we're talking about concealing one piece of data in another piece of data. And specifically with image steganography, it means we're hiding data, some text, typically a flag or some other piece of data in the image. It can also be hidden in an audio file, uh, but we won't talk about that much today. Um, but the important thing to realize with steganography is that the resulting piece of data will look and sound like it has not been altered. So to the naked eye, um, the image will look almost identical to the image before you hid the data in it, which is really neat because it means you can hide data in images and nobody would know, um, which is kind of neat. Uh, so this is what I mean. So let's say here on the left, we have the Mona Lisa. Um, we're gonna use image steganography to sort of add the super secret file.txt. This could contain any information. And the result is this. Um, as you can see, compared to the uh, the unprocessed image, it looks pretty much exactly the same, um, but the data is hidden in there. So, in, in order to extract this data, you have to know a very you have to know how it was sort of added into this image, and so you have to um, use some tools to extract it. Um, what we're going to be talking about uh, specifically is least significant bit steganography. Um, and by least significant bit steganography, what I mean is this. It's Let me see if I can explain this. Uh, <laughs> uh, so with least significant bit steganography, um, what you do is everything in green are the bits for the original uh, image file. So each bit is eight bytes, as we remember. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we have one byte here. We have another byte here. We have a third byte here, et cetera. Um, and what we're going to do is take one byte of our secret message, so one byte being a character, if we remember maybe from some introductory, uh, uh, of like some introductory comp sci courses, we take our one byte here, and what we do is we encode the data. Each bit in this red byte gets encoded similar like this, where each bit gets stuck on the end of each byte of our green original data. So this is the original data is in green, um, here we have the, the, the leftmost bit here, this one gets put on the end of the first byte of our original data. This zero gets put on the, the last byte of our second, uh, the second, uh, sorry, the last bit of our second byte of our original data. And this goes all the way down. Um, and the question is, why does this work? Uh, I was going to try and demo it. I couldn't figure out a way to actually demo it before we got started. Sorry about that. But the idea is by using LSB or least significant bit, so this being the least significant bit, um, we've, we really don't change the overall value of this byte. So this byte here uh, could be could represent, let's say, a pixel, one pixel in an image file. It could represent the color of that image in an image file. Um, and by changing the rightmost or the least significant bit from to one or to zero, uh, it doesn't affect this this uh, this byte very much because it's the lowest value, or sorry, it's because it's the least significant bit. 
changing it won't change the overall value of this. Similarly, if you had, let's say if we're talking about in decimal, if you had the number 10100, if you change the the rightmost digit on 1000 to something else, it's not going to really affect the overall value of, of 1000 um, compared to if you were to change like the thousandth place or the hundredth place. Um, so the idea with this is by changing this least significant bit in the data, um, you're not really changing the color very much. You're maybe slightly changing the color, um, like very, very uh, slightly changing the hue or, or the color, but to the naked eye, you won't be able to tell. So that's what we're talking about, least significant bit uh, steganography. Um, so some tools that Kali has for least significant bit steganography uh, is Steghide. And Steghide is a tool that allows embedding and extraction of hidden data. So this is sort of the tool that you can use to hide the data, or you can also use to um, extract any hidden data from there. Um, if you type man Steghide, you can get more information. But to actually um, extract the data, you would do Steghide, uh, space extract, pack SF, and then the stego file here. So the stego file being the file with the hidden data. Uh, let's see. So here, if we do man steg hide, you can see all of the information here about how to use steg hide. So what you'll do, I don't have a file here. You can do steg hide, extract, SF. Uh, anyway, it's steg hide extract F and then your stego file name here, and that will extract it for you. Um, yeah. And one important thing to note is oh, sorry, we're here we have. What were the commands if man steg hide says no entry? So what you want to do is run sudo apt install steg hide right here. And that should install it for you. So one quick thing to mention is try steg hide first. And then there's another GUI based program in Kali called stego suite. They both do pretty much the same thing. Um, but something that I've noticed is that uh, sometimes extracting uh, data with steg high doesn't work, but extracting data with stego suite does work and vice versa. Um, so yeah, data can sometimes only be extracted by the program that embedded it. So if steg high created the file, uh, if they embedded the hidden data, then sometimes only steg high can un un -extract or extract that hidden data back and the same for stego suite. So yeah, use this command. Uh, on a, if you ever find an image file in your CTFs, use Steghide on it first and see what you can find. Uh, and that brings us to our first challenge. Uh, I'll give you a bit of time for this one. Um, yeah, good luck. Uh, so yeah, just go to infosecucalgary.ca slash static slash birds.jpg and you should get it. Oh, right. Um, so this time what we're gonna be doing is in our Discord channel, so the main Discord that we have, we have a bunch of breakout rooms. Some of them are named intro, uh, one to five, and advanced one to five. Um, if you're in the intro um, workshop, you can go into one of these breakout rooms and work with other people if you want. Sometimes it's fun, more fun to work on some of these problems with other people. So, And we'll have some execs popping through maybe if you need some help or if you're confused about anything. So yeah, check that out. Go into the breakout rooms and, and work on this together. I think I'll give, I don't know, 20 minutes for this, maybe slightly less depending on people, how things are going for people. The stake hide work on links, I'm not sure. I don't think so. Question. Yeah, I don't think so. Let me double check on that.
Yeah, no, it looks like Stekai does not work for links. So you'll actually have to download the image. Oh, and one other thing I wanted to mention is uh, with Stegheide, sometimes after you do the command to extract the data, it'll ask for a password. Um, none of the challenges in this workshop have a password. So you, for the step, for the uh, Stegheide part, um, so just hit enter when you hit that and enter a blank password and that should work. Oh, nice, people are finding flags. Remember, there's two flags hidden in this uh, image. See if we can find both. So we just have a question here. Will flags be findable slash valid after the stream? Uh, yep, they should be. Um, you should still be able to DM them to ORCID and you should be able to still get them from this uh, link. Some of the previous workshops, such as like the web exploitation and the and the other one I did, which was the uh, Linux privilege escalation. Um, I know that we have to take the challenges down after a while because otherwise we're sort of paying for server uh, infrastructure, but with these, these are just hosted on our main server, so you can download these whenever you want. So Fahim is asking, what's the passphrase? So with Stegheide, sometimes it asks, asks for a password. Um, so when it asks, asks for the password, uh, in my case, there are no passwords on our on on this file on my Stegheide files. So just just hit enter when you get there and enter no password.
So here, Cody's just asking, what was the GUI program called again? The GUI program is called Stego Suite, I believe. Let me double check. Let's see here. So if you go in Kali, so we have Steg Hide here, which is the command line tool. Um, go up here and go Stego Suite. You go sweet right here. The man, just this little man in black here, with the hat. Uh, you have Stego Suite, so you can go file. You can open the file that you want to uh, look at, and it works similarly. Um, I should note uh, for my work for this workshop, uh, Steg Hide should work a hundred percent of the time. I haven't tried it with Stego Suite. It might work. Give it a shot, but. So Fahim is just uh, having trouble opening. Uh, make sure you're in the same directory as where you download the um, the file. Uh, you can type the command ls to for list and show you all of the files in the directory. If you don't see birds.jpg when you type ls, you're not in the right directory. Uh, just a quick holy here how many people have found one flag or i don't know let me tell me how many flags have you found <laughs> of the two one okay okay it looks like people are getting one flag i'm assuming that's the steg hide or the steg yeah the steg hide flag um there is two in there and i should tell you the second flag actually look at the picture. Uh, like I said, with forensics, you can be really clever in how you hide data. So uh, sometimes it's you don't have to use a tool. Sometimes you just have to look at the picture and, and maybe be a little bit clever. See if you can find any patterns, see if there's anything interesting uh, that you can think of when looking at the actual image in an image viewer. Looks like we got some people in some of the breakout rooms. Uh, don't uh, feel free to join. Don't be scared. Everybody's nice. It's a lot of fun. All right, I might give this another five minutes. Uh, I'll give you another hint quickly. When you're looking at the image, you might notice something interesting with the birds, uh, specifically, I don't know, <laughs> where they're positioned. Um, I should also state that the birds have two different states. So think about what sort of encodings that you know of that have two different values. Um, yeah.
All right. So I just went into the breakout room. So people are, are making some headway. So like I said, make sure you look at the, the, oh, sorry. One second. Sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> make sure you look at the direction the birds are facing. They are facing in two different ways two, not four. There's facing two different ways. And think of the different encodings that you can use. Um, binary is one of them that I can think of. Uh, it may or may not be binary. It's not binary. <laughs> Good luck. I'll give this another three minutes. So it looks like people are getting close. So if you're still having trouble, I'll give you one more hint. Think about what the birds are sitting on. They're on telephone wire wires. Um, birds are sitting on telephone wires, but before there was telephone wires, there were telegraph wires, and there was a mode of communication used in telegraph. So think about that. I'll give you a few more minutes. It looks like people are getting close.
Sounds like people in the Discord are getting really, really close, which is exciting. Good, good job, guys. Uh, just while we're waiting, I'd like to give a shout out to my sister, Holly Lowther, who is watching the stream. Just thought I'd embarrass her there. Shout out to Holly Lowther. <laughs> All right, looks like people are getting it. I might move on here and do a quick demo of how to get those flags. Um, so let's first go here. File. Get, it, no, get the file here. We'll download the file from our servers. Um, so we have birds.jpg. You open it, we see some birds. I'll do the steg uh, part first. So here we have birds.jpg. We're gonna run stag hide extract pack sf on birds.jpg. Here it's gonna ask for a passphrase. Uh, like I said, I'm not using a passphrase. So you can just hit enter and we'll see. We wrote extracted data to words.txt, which we can see here. It's made a file called words.txt. If we look in this file, we have a bunch of random strings kind of look like flags, uh, but none of these really match the, the format of the UC sec flag that we have. So in order to do this, we have to do our fancy grep that we remember. We can grep for UC sec on the words.txt and this will pull it out. It'll find UC sec. We have words, UC sec, birds of a feather flock together. And there's your first flag. Um, for the second flag, uh, I'm really pl proud of this of this challenge. Uh, we have the birds here um, sitting on the on the telephone wires here. Uh, if we look closely, some of the birds are facing forward, some of them are facing sideways. So there's, uh, as I mentioned, they're encoded. Um, there's two different states for these birds. Uh, you'd think binary, uh, maybe, but some of these don't convert the binary characters very well. And so the other thing is Morse code. Uh, I won't go through it because it'll take too long. But if you look here, we have one group of birds, two, three, four, five for U, C, sec. And then we have a little bit of a curly brace here. Um, so this will be U, C, sec, curly brace. And then you can get the flag this way by putting in these bird states as Morse code. And good job. Some of the people in the Discord, they're working there in the breakout rooms, managed to get it. So maybe for the next one, don't feel uh, feel free to join. Let's let's get to work to, uh, with multiple people on this. Okay, here we go. All right. Next up, we'll talk about file signatures and spectrograms. Um. So what is a file signature? So a file signature is a piece of metadata that starts on most files. So I think Jeremy mentioned in his our very first workshop is uh, in, a, in our very first workshop that just uh, the the file um, what can the file extension in Linux doesn't necessarily indicate what the file type is. So if you have something birds.png or jpeg like we had before, the j dot jpeg doesn't mean that it's a jpeg file. Normally, what determines what the file type is are something known as magic bytes, and these bytes are really neat. Uh, so for example, we have a PNG file here uh, and at the front we have .png. So this is actually in the byte data. Um, and I can show you here. I know there's a, a link here. You go to this website, you can find a bunch of different uh, file signatures. So if we go here, this is a good place to look. Um, here, it'll show you all of the different file signatures. So we have an Adobe Flash object is SOL. Um, <laughs> it's kind of an unfortunate acronym. Uh, Windows metadata file, SWMF. So these are sort of the magic bytes here that determine what the byte type is. 
And if I look at birds.jpg, um, see that it starts with JFIF. Um, look here for JFIF, is the JPEG, the JPEG graphics file for JFIF. Um, so this is one way to um, show what the file type is. Uh, using these file signatures. But what's important is sometimes multiple files can be concatenated together. Actually, let me see, it's getting kind of dark. Hopefully that's better. Um, some files can be concatenated together. So what this means is you take, uh, you have one file here, you have another file here, and you sort of squish them together. So you have all of the bytes of the one file and then all of the bytes of the other file immediately after. Um, so we have two files sort of squished into one. Uh, but what's neat about this is you can't actually tell <laughs> uh, what the two files are <laughs> uh, using normal Linux commands. So let me see here. So let's actually try this. If we have magpy.jpg, here we have magpy.jpg, and then we have birds.jpg. What we can do, let's try um, appending. Let's try appending birds.jpg. I tested this before. I should have tested this to the end of magpy.jpg. So this is what we're doing. We're getting the data for birds.jpg and we're appending it to the end of magpy.jpg. Um, this will change magpy.jpg. If I open magpy.jpg, the file doesn't actually look changed at all. It looks just perfectly normal. But this birds.jpg has actually been squished on the end of this magpy.jpg. So this is this birds.jpg is in there somewhere. Um, so that's sort of a way that we can hide it in there. Uh, but then the question is, how do we get it out? Uh, we can use binwalk. Um, what binwalk will do is it will walk through a binary, hence the name binwalk, and it will look for all of the different file signatures and see if it can find more than one. So typically you'd have a file signature at the beginning of the file, but binwalk will go even further and look all the way through the file for as many file signatures as it can find. Um, so for example, if I run binwalk now on the magpy.jpg, hopefully this works. Oh, it might've only found one. Hopefully I was hoping it would find both of them. <laughs> I should have tested this before. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, but I was hoping it would find both. I don't know why it didn't. Sorry about that. Um, anyways, if you have, let's say, a JPEG and then a PNG squished together, a JPEG and then a zip file, binwalk will find it. So running binwalk on the file will just show all of the different file signatures in that file. But you can run binwalk tack E, E for extract. And what that will do is it'll actually unconcatenate or split up the file back into its original parts. Um, so, and it'll put that in a folder, similarly named to the file that you're, you extracted from. Um, uh, you might remember the uh, file command from, la, from Linux. That will tell you, if I run file on Magpie, it'll say, this is a JPEG data. File only looks for the first file signature. It won't find any more. And it'll tell you what it is. Then what goes that extra step further and scans the entire file and allows you to extract using the tack E flag. Um, so that's kind of neat. Grab some water. Okay. So audio spectrograms. These are really cool. <laughs> I think these are really, really cool. So an audio spectrogram, it's just a visual representation of frequencies in an audio file. So when you think of an audio file, uh, like a WAV file, and normally when you think about the visualization of that audio, you think about it being sort of like a sine wave or not, or a wave uh, going up and down to represent the, uh, the frequencies in your voice um, or in the sound, in the sound file. Um, spectrograms are different. They also show the frequencies um, of the audio, but they do it in a different way on along the, along the vertical axis here. Uh, might be kind of tough for you guys to see. Sorry about that. Um, the, on the on the Y axis, we have our, our frequency and on the X axis, we have time. Um, so this is sort of what a spectrogram looks like for a normal audio file. Um, but this can be the spectrogram for, uh, if we hide data, this is what it looks like. 
Um, here, let me see if I can, I have Chrome Music Lab. Let's see if I can show this. Sure. Um, so here we go, uh, we have a spectrogram. Hopefully this works, uh, let's allow this. So here it's taking the spectrogram of my voice. Um, lower voice, it's kind of on the low end, I have a deeper voice. If I make a higher voice, it goes higher. <laughs> uh, so this is sort of what a spectrogram looks like. Um, and as you can see, it's the data is kind of garbled uh, to the naked eye, it doesn't really mean anything. It's useful to sort of look at where the frequencies are, but that's about it. Um, so what we can do is mm -hmm. we can, like I said, hide secret data using spectrograms like this. Um, and one thing to note is because the spectrogram, the uh, spectrogram of this file actually contains data, the audio file is going to sound really, really weird because the high and low frequencies are artificially added. So it's going to be really, really high and really, really low. It's kind of going to sound like maybe a dial-up machine. <laughs> you know what that sounds like, a really crackly audio. Um, but yeah, so typically if you find a .wav file, so a .wav file um, for an audio file, and it sounds really, really weird and, and, and it kind of hurts your ears, it's very likely that there's some uh, spectrogram data hidden in there. Um, but the question is, how do you view the spectrogram data? Um, you can use an online spectrogram, which is what I would recommend. Uh, I'll have a link to one when we get to the challenge um, where you just upload the, the audio file you want and then play it through the, through the website and it'll show you the data. Or you can use Audacity. Um, I'm not sure if Kali has Audacity, uh, Audacity is just like an audio editing tool. Um, but for the most part, you should be able to just use the online spectrogram analyzer. So we've talked about spin walk. We've talked about what a spectrogram is and how we can hide data, uh, in, in audio files. So here we go. Here's our second challenge. You can get it at infosec.calgary.ca slash static slash sun.mp3. And there is one flag hidden this time. Um, Here's the binwalk command, and below it is a, uh, a spectro a spectrogram analyzer online that I, I know to work. Um, you should just be able to Google online spectrogram analyzer, and you should find this. Good luck, and uh, join the breakout rooms. Oh, I should also mention for any people who are just joining or joined a little bit late, uh, to fill out our attendance form, I'll post that link in the chat uh, here soon. Um, actually, Emily, could you maybe post that <laughs> and, um, we can make sure you fill that out and you can, uh, get voting rights. Also, uh, by request, uh, shout out to my mom, who is also watching. Shout out to my mom. <laughs> so many shout outs today. I love it.
<laughs> I did not add that to the screen. Thank you, Emily. <laughs> I'll just give a quick hint to get some people started. Um, like I said before, typically when you're looking for spectrogram data, it's a lot of the times it's in a WAV file, a WAV file. Um, so look out for those. Also, if the sound file that you're listening to sounds normal, it probably doesn't have any spectrogram data in it. So if it sounds like music or like voice, something that you can recognize, it more than likely doesn't have anything hidden. Um, so be on the lookout for weird sounding WAV files. Um, also, the other thing I want to note is if you are using Binwalk and you're using the extract mode, the TAC E, and you run it and it hangs up and it kind of freezes, uh, that's normal. That just means that you're extracting some data um, that uh, Binwalk is having trouble reading. So for example, a password locked zip file, for example, <laughs> uh, keep that in mind. So if it freezes and you can't get out, press Control C. So when you run it and it hangs up, press control C to get out, it should still extract the data, um, but it's just been walk being a little bit buggy. Uh, another hint I should say is f flags start with UCSEC. If it's not in the flag format, it is not a flag. Keep that in mind when you're working through this.
it looks like I'm talking. I'm actually talking in the one of the breakout rooms. Sorry. <laughs> All right, I might give, I'll leave it till seven and then I'll do a demo of this, of this challenge. So three more minutes. Um, another hint, you might have to use bin walk twice. That's the other hint I'll give. Uh, maybe just uh, post in chat if you've gotten the flag. Uh, let me know. I just want to see where we're at. All right, I'll give it one more minute here. Just let some people try a few extra things and then we'll move on.
Oh, nice. Some people are getting it. Good. Good, good, good. All right. I might move on and do a quick demo of how to get this flag. Um, Uh, is my mic on? Good. Okay. So first things first, get the file. It's just a static file like a lot of these problems are for forensics. It's kind of the reason I like forensics is because you can play around with it for, I mean, as much as you want. You've downloaded it. You don't have, have a server up. Um, so it gives us sun.mp3. Um, if we play this, it might not let me play it in Audacity. I remember having getting some issues. Oh, sorry. Uh, I can't actually, I don't think you'll be able to hear it anyways. Um, anyway, so you get some MP3. Some of MP3 is just some royalty for free music. So it sounds normal. It sounds like sort of any music that you'd hear in any standard elevator. Um, <laughs> and so because of that, you would think that there probably isn't uh, spectrogram data hidden in there. So what we can do is run binwalk on this file. So if we run binwalk, sun.mp3, It'll spit out, oh, we found, we know there's some MP3 data, but it also found a zip archive data. And for those who don't know, zip is just a file type. It's a compressed file type. So it's like a folder that um, that is that where all of the data in it is compressed. And in order to read from a zip file, you just have to unzip it. Um, and there's, you can like, if you double click on a zip file, typically a, a GUI based zip manager will, will open up and you can read the zip data and extract it that way. But what you'll see is it found some zip data and it's found in that zip data, a file called combined.wav. And this is a separate file than the MP3 that we had before. So we can run binwalk, hack E for extract, sun.mp3. This will allow binwalk to actually extract the data. So ULS will have a new folder here called, that starts with an underscore sun.mp3.extracted. And this is just a new directory that Binwalk made for us. So if we look in here, um, in here, and what we find is combine.wav. Um, what you might find is there's also a zip file here. Uh, this is actually the zip file that was appended to the end. Um, Binwalk was kind enough to extract the contents of it for us. So if I open this, uh, this in a zip editor or in a zip viewer, uh, combine.wav is already in there. Uh, binwalk will just sort of pull it out for us. So we have combine.wav, this new folder, or new file, sorry. Um, again, I can't play it on Kali. I don't think it'll work on stream, some limitations. But if you play it, it'll sound really, really awful, and it'll hurt your ears. So there's one indication that it has uh, spectrogram data in it, and the other is that it's a WAV file. A lot of the times, WAV files will have the spectrogram data hidden inside of it. Um, so if we go to our web browser and Google a online spectrogram viewer or analyzer. Oh, no. Uh, sorry. Spectrogram analyzer, first one that shows up. Bigger here is this one. Um, this will give you an area where you can view your spectrogram. Um, so you can upload a file. Let's upload combine.wav, upload, and then we hit play. And here it's playing our our, our uh, file, and we get the text, the long, and oh wait for it, <laughs> winding road. So a Beatles song, the long and winding road. Um, what you'll notice is this doesn't start with UC sec, as a lot of our flags do. If you tried to put this into Orchid, it will not work. There's a reason for this. Um, what we have to do is we have combine.wav. If we run binwalk on it again, it will say there's another zip file in there. And in that zip file, there is flag.jpg. That was, that was uh, <laughs> which uh, is sort of the second in the second layer down. Um, if we try and extract this, like I said, uh, binwalk will freeze up. The reason for this is how it nicely sort of extracted from the zip file before it found our zip file and it extracted it nicely. Binwalk is trying to do this again, but the problem is, is that this zip file that it is extracted 
is password protected. So Binwalk doesn't know how to handle that because it doesn't have the password. So we'll get the new directory underscore combine.wav. When we go in here, uh, we'll find the zip file. Um, you can do this using command line. Uh, I'll show you how to do it with a command line, actually. There is a program called unzip, uh, which is used to unzip files. You can do unzip, tac capital P for the password, the long and winding road, and then the file name, which I've forgotten, <laughs> 166. One, Zip. We run this. It will inflate flag.jpg. So now we have flag.jpg. If we actually view this, there we go. ECSEC files and files and files. So in this case, we had um, two bin walks, uh, some spectrogram that had the password hidden, and that's how you get the data. That's how you get the flag. Awesome, okay. Moving on to our final section, um, mounting file systems. And this is something that's gonna be useful for uh, if you're just like uh, learning Linux in general, this isn't mounting file systems, um, isn't, uh, isn't sort of specialized to CTFs or hacking. This is something that you, you might wanna learn just if you're using Linux. Um, so file systems and images. What are file systems and what are images? <laughs> uh, so uh, disks and file systems, they're often given as uh, .img files for image or .iso files. Um, .iso files are typically, I believe, I think they're just disk images. I could be wrong about that. Um, but essentially they're just sort of files that contain, um, that contain a uh, sort of a, an image or a snapshot of some data. Um, for a dot image, it could be a file system. And what I mean by file system is I mean like uh, Linux has a file system called ext4. Uh, Windows has a file system called, I think it's NTFS. Um, and essentially, it's just sort of a, um, a format for saving the data on your disk. So this is sort of like an image of, your, of, a, of a hard drive or an SSD. Um, and so when we're given these images, what we need to do first is we need to mount these images before we can read the contents of the images. Um, so we need to mount these to a folder in Linux. Um, and to do that, we use mount and u mount commands. Uh, so mount to mount the image and u mount to unmount it. So it's not unmount like u n mount, it's just u mount to unmount. And I'll show you how to do that. Uh, and I might walk through it after 10 minutes or five minutes just to make sure everybody's on the same page. Um, so first, mounting an image. There'll be a brief summary of this on the challenge page. But what you do is you go to a directory where you want to have, uh, maybe your home directory is a good place or your desktop. Um, sudo make directory temp. I guess you don't need sudo for this. Maybe do it just in case. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, you can just make a directory um, called temp. Then what you want to do is mount the image file. So sudo mount the image file that you'll be given for the challenge in this case. And then temp, this is the directory that you just made. So what you're doing is you're taking that image file and you are mounting it in that directory. So that when you go into that directory, um, it's like you're looking at the file system. Um, and then finally switch to that directory using cd temp. So change directory to temp. So you're making the directory you're mounting the image, and then you're just going into that directory. Um, to actually unmount the image file, you're kind of doing everything in reverse now. Um, sudo u mount temp, so you're unmounting this directory, um, what's mounted in this directory. And then optionally, you can clean up the previous directory by doing sudo rm tac r for recursive. This allows you to delete directories and then temp the directory that you just made. So when you're, you're done reading that file system or that disk image, um, you can you unmount it using umount. So first we mount it, read all the files that we want, and then we unmount it. And um, this is essentially what Linux does when you plug in a, a USB drive or something. It's just mounting and unmounting the image, uh, the, uh, the USB image um, to, the, uh, to a folder on your computer. But we're just gonna be doing it manually. Um, 
Finally, I can't remember if we taught, taught this, but I'm going to teach it anyways. Um, my favorite command is recursive grep. If you don't remember, grep is used to search for patterns in a file. Um, we used it to, uh, to find the first flag in that birds challenge with that weird looking uh, text file to find the flag. Um, but that was only to grep one file. Um, we can use recursive grep to search all of the files in that directory. Um, so if we have, let's see if I can quickly make something. Uh, just make a directory one, one. Directory two, two, and then I go magpie into test.txt. Um, so we have test.txt has magpie. I'll go back to our first directory. I will also echo magpie to act.txt, just making up names. Um, so essentially what this does is now we can use recursive grep on that folder. So if I go back, um, here I have my directory one, which has directory two in it, and there's two different files in both directories. If I use recursive grep searching for magpie on one, it will recursively go through every single file and find magpie in it. So it, it looked um, first in the first folder, it found in back.txt, it found magpie, it then looked in the first um, the first directory, then into the second directory, then into text.txt, and it looked for magpie again. Um, and it found magpie again. Um, so why is this cool? Because if you do this on a root directory, so like on the very base directory of some, of some uh, file system, um, and you add the sort of the, the, the flag format, uh, Linux will automatically search every single file for that flag format, which can save you a lot of time. So using recursive grep can save you a lot of time in looking for some pattern in a file um, on a Linux server. Um, and then, of, as of course, you can type um, man grep to get more information on that. Um, so here we go, our third challenge. There are four flags hidden in this. Um, you're going to be given a, an image file like we had before. You're then going to mount it. Um, and then you can find the flags inside this, this file system that you're mounting. Um, some useful tools, grep, recursive grep, bin walk with three extract. Um, yeah. And after five minutes, if people are still having trouble mounting, I'll do a quick demo of how to mount this challenge just so that you can get started and good luck.
All right, just to make sure everybody's on the same page for actually mounting the file system, I'll just quickly go through that. Um, if you've already mounted it, you don't have to pay attention to this. Um, so we go to info sec you Calgary and we go to challenge.image. I will download our image file here. Um, let's just move that to the desktop. Oh, we have our image file here. Um, we can make a directory, call it temp. We have a new directory called temp right here. Um, we go into temp, we'll notice there's nothing in there. It's completely empty. We just made it. Um, so what we would do is we would write sudo mount um, challenge.image to the temp file that we just made. We'll probably ask for your password because we're running with sudo. Um, and there we go. Uh, it's completed. So we still have the temp. If we go to temp, we look inside. Now we have some data. What you might notice is that this data looks very, very similar to an actual Linux file system, like uh, sort of how um, it would look like on a normal Linux server on the root directory. So if we look, go to root on Kali. It's not exactly the same, but it's very similar. So this is the actual folder on my root directory here. And then this is it uh, in that file system. Um, so the idea here is you want to try, this is sort of very similar to how a, a, um, a sort of breaking into a box type of thing would, would look like, how to extract data. We're just sort of doing this locally on our own machine. So you can't mess anything up on, our, on some servers somewhere. So there's four flags hidden somewhere in these folders. And you can use the, uh, the tools that I've taught you today to find them. Also, could you, if you're having still having difficulty um, mounting the file system, uh, just let me know. Uh, either just say a comment or uh, DM me. I'm James in our Discord server, and I can see if I can give you a hand or get one of the execs to help you out.
uh, I'll just give another quick hint. Um, I realize some of you might be kind of new to the Linux file system and where you want to look. Um, some notable directories are slash home uh, from the from the directory that you've you've mounted, of course, not your own home directory. But so the home directory, there might be something in there. That's where um, all of the users' data is is stored. Um, another one might be the root directory. I know that there's that's where roots data is stored. There could be some interesting stuff there. Uh, take a look there and see what you can find. All right, I might give this till 7.35. Um, see where people are at. I might give a little bit more. This is the, one of the last challenges for today. I have a bonus after, afterwards, but um, I won't be going through it. It'll be an, an extra to show what you've learned. Um, so yeah, uh, 7.35, and I'll come back and see where people are at.
All right. Uh, maybe just post in chat. Let me know how many you found out of the four that there are, are available. Um, if I don't get many responses, I'm going to assume either people are bored or they, they found them. So just let me know. Oh, one, that's okay. This is a more challenging, uh, this is a more challenging problem. So don't feel bad if you don't have many. Four, four, okay, good. Well done, guys. Okay, I might give it another minute and then I'll go through it here. Okay, it looks like a lot of people are getting it here. So I'll just quickly go through this challenge. Um, make sure you can hear me. Oh, not that. Um, so yeah, so we've mounted our file system. Hopefully all of you got to that point at least. If not, DM me after, I'll certainly help you out. Um, so we have our mounted file system, which looks very similar to a uh, Linux, uh, sort of the Linux uh, directories and a standard Linux install. Um, so, First thing that I always try and do is run my favorite recursive grep. So we're, uh, if we do grep, pack r, say recursively, and we search for ucsec. Um, if we don't uh, supply anything else, it will start the recursion um, here and currently. Uh, let's add this too. If we do that, um, it will give us two things, uh, lost and found permission denied. Can't actually read in there. It's okay. Uh, and then it says binary file proc bus, PCI, and then this string matches. So we found something that matches. Um, it's not actually showing it to us. There is a way to actually show binary file data. I can't remember off the top of my head. It might be, see what happens. It is not. Anyways, what you can do is you can change directory to proc bus PCI, look what's in there. We'll find that file that matches. Um, and then we can run strings on it shows a bunch of different uh, looking for text, masky characters. If we run strings, it will spit it out right here. We have the first flag in this binary data. Uh, grep is really powerful. So go back. There's our first flag, one of four. Um, go back. If we go, I mentioned the home directory is a good place to look. If we go into home, the ls, there's a user called magpie, Go into the user called magpie, and we find two different text files. Uh, first, let's look at, well, well done. Um, might be worth looking at this in a web viewer. Kind of um, home, magpie, and we look in here, we get a file called well done, and there's our second flag before. Good job looking in home. Um, when you're doing these sort of breaking into a box challenges, um, you can always um, always look in home because uh, the home directories because that's where you'll find maybe some files that the user created specifically. Um, and one thing we can do is if we run bin walk on well done, then it found the PNG uh, the PNG data for the well done, and it also found a zip archive with a file called well hidden. So if we do our bin walk tack E on well done, it will extract for us. And so we have our extracted here, uh, the zip file that contained well hidden.jpg. And if we look at that, we get our third flag. Bin walk is awesome too. So there's our third flag there. Um, what you might've noticed in home, there is also a, a file called journal.txt. If we read journal.txt using cat, uh, 
have their diary. Uh, they had the most amazing day, caught a few worms, washed my feathers, and flew higher than I ever have before. It was amazing. Anyways, the password is magpies love to fly. So we have a password similar to how we had bef what we had before in our second challenge that we did today. Um, if you're given a password, this is not a flag. This is probably going to be used for sort of like a two-part challenge where you have to find one piece of information to get another piece of information. So we know it is magpies love to fly. Go back um, to our directory here, our mounted file system. The other place I said is to look in root. Root is sort of like the home directory, but for the root user, that that super fancy administrative user that uh, that uh, Linux um, that Linux uh, machines have. So if we go into the root directory and we look inside that, there's a bunch of data um, files that we don't care about. We find one called lockbox.zip. Um, I can show you in the actual uh, GUI version. If we look at lockbox.zip and I try and click extract here, um, let's extract it, sure. It's gonna ask for the password. So we would just type the password in here and it would extract it. Um, to do it through the command line, like I was showing before, again, it's unzip, file, tack, capital P, not lowercase, capital P, magpies love to fly. That's likely the password because that's what we found on lockbox.zip. Extract flag.txt. And if we look at that, there we go. Our fourth uh, flag of four. Um, password to keep things secure. So there we go. That's how you get all of the uh, flags for that challenge. Um, I'll just quickly show you how to unmount as well. So here we have our temp folder. This is our file system is currently mounted in there. Um, what we can do is simply sudo umount, not unmount, umount temp. Um, do that, we go back into temp. Once again, it's empty because that file system, the challenge.img, has been unmounted from that directory. So if we go back and do remove tack r for recursive to delete directories, and then you can clean up temp if you'd like to get rid of that. And there we go. That's how you do the third challenge. So yeah. Thanks for listening, guys. Uh, that was Forensics. Um, here are some extra related Pico CTF challenges. We have Pico CTF 2018, Reading Between the Eyes, et cetera, some from 2019. Uh, like we say, start with Pico at 2018. If you haven't done that yet, do that one first, then do Pico CTF 2019. Um, once again, if you haven't, if you weren't here at the beginning, there is a CTF that's going to be run. Um, that's the uh, registration has opened for, but it's starting on Saturday, the 23rd at 10 p.m. our time, Mountain Standard Time. It's called the pctf.com and it is made for uh, sort of high schoolers and middle schoolers. So it's a really good starting place to sort of get your feet wet in some CTF stuff. I know we're all busy, but you should uh, at least give a, give a few of them a shot. Um, uh, the other thing, if you look on our website, We go to speaker or go into calendars. You'll see that next week, right after our um, forensics workshop today, we have a speaker by Samina Amin. Um, we have a, if you haven't seen yet, we have a, a uh, speakers tab here. We click on that. You can get some information about the speaker series that's running um, throughout the, the next two semesters and our uh, the fall and winter semesters. Um, and you can see the speakers that we have. We have five throughout the year. They're all really cool people. They do really cool stuff. Uh, Samina is a cybersecurity consultant. Um, and uh, yeah, that's going to be um, next week, I believe. Uh, one thing to mention in red, access to the speaker series is restricted to paying club members. Um, and to pay your club fees, this is how you do it. Transfer $10 to the email infosecucalgary at gmail.com. Uh, include your name your email and your Discord username. Please include your Discord username so we know who you are on the server. And then you'll get the cool role and you can view these really cool speaker series. This is not a lot of money, especially for the sort of the quality that you're getting from these people. So make sure you do that. And that's, so that's next week. And you can look at our calendar and you can see when everything is coming up if you didn't know. Um, so yeah, make sure you tune in for that next week. Um, and finally, 
just as an extra bonus, we have one more bonus challenge. Um, there's flag, there's one flag in here. This is a really cool challenge. It's my favorite challenge. Um, so yeah, give that a shot. You can go info secu calgary static colors.png. You'll get that file. And can you find the flag? There's one flag in this one. Um, somebody's asking high schools and middle schools have CPSC programs. Uh, surprisingly, yes. And surprisingly, some of them are really, really good. And a lot of the kids are really smart, <laughs> which is really cool. But yep, uh, check this out. And I think that might be it for me. Um, we might hang around. I might hang, I'll leave this uh, up maybe for a couple more minutes just to make sure everybody gets the link. But I'll probably hang around in one of the breakout rooms that we have in our Discord server. Um, I think that's everything. Emily, is that everything? Or is there anything else I need to mention? Uh, I guess just also a reminder that we, uh, we, Typically, hang out. We're we're in the Discord on Fridays for office hours. If there's anything that you uh, want help with, uh, we'll be in there. Normally three to four, although we go late if people are there. Um, and then Saturdays for the last couple weeks as well, uh, we've been doing another hangout for uh, for members. So if you've got the premium member Discord role, you can come hang out on Saturdays. This weekend, we'll probably be working on that uh, that. PCTF. So if you want to come hang out with the execs and you want some some help or you want to make teams for the CTF, um, go for it. It's going to be a really fun one. It's also up for a whole week, this one that we're talking about today, uh, which is really nice because it'll hopefully give you a chance if you are busy with midterms and stuff. Hopefully it will give you a chance to work on it a little bit over the course of the week and you don't have to feel like it's like crunch time to to be able to play it so yeah oh awesome yeah thanks guys uh i think i might wrap it up here i'll just post the link one more time in the chat for the bonus challenge um let's see and there we go that's in chat uh static colors at png so yeah give that a try uh, it's really cool. It's not as difficult as maybe the last one was. If you were a little bit uh, discouraged that you had some trouble, don't worry. Those are some tough challenges. They're a little bit hit your head against the wall until you get it. But sometimes it's tough when you don't know where to look. But with experience, you'll get better. Trust me. So don't worry. Um, so yeah, thanks everybody. And I think I'll wrap it up here. Have a good night. <laughs>